sugar, sweet spices, marshmallows. That's usually what you would find in a sweet potato casserole. Yeah, today Feed Your Family Tonight founder and family dinner coach Marie Feebach has a twist on the classic side dish. Good morning, Marie. Good morning, Shane. Yes, you know, usually sweet potato casserole is something that is sugary and sweet and that has its place, but you know, when I go to a restaurant, I order my sweet potatoes with sour cream and butter because I like that savory sweet mm -hmm. potato. And I thought, you know, that might make a nice twist on your Thanksgiving table. There's so many heavy foods. This is a little bit lighter and it's just kind of a savory sweet potato casserole. And it starts off with sweet potatoes. Now, there are sweet potatoes and there are sweet potatoes. Yeah, Very different sizes. They cook the same way, but they're gonna take a very different amount of time. The big thing is you wanna make sure that you poke them with a the fork at least five or six times because that allows the steam to escape and you don't end up with an explosion in your oven. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, Do you so, prefer to go with the, the smaller ones or the bigger ones? You know, um, they're both fine. I kind of like the bigger ones better because there's less to peel and it's yeah. just easier on me. But sometimes you can find the smaller ones, sometimes you can find the bigger ones and they both work. The smaller ones are gonna cook at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes and you wanna make sure they are really, really well cooked. The larger ones are gonna take an hour and a half to two hours. And this is how you know if they're well cooked. I have one here. When, if you take some tongs and you can squeeze it and the flesh starts to squeeze out, that's how you know that they are done enough. You want them to be really deep and caramelized. Mm -hmm. And then what you're gonna do after they've come out of the oven and cooled, this one's been cooled in the refrigerator, but you are gonna peel the skins off and the skins just come right off and you end up with this roasted flesh. You might have some little dark spots on the flesh and that's where the caramelization has happened. It's a good thing. That's where all the vitamin A is right here. Okay. Well, you can eat the skins, that's Ooh. totally fine. And then for this casserole, it is crazy simple. I have, this is three pounds of roasted sweet potatoes, a teaspoon of coarse sea salt, a half a cup, of sour cream, and then two egg yolks. And the egg yolks kind of add a richness. They also kind of help it to hold together as a casserole. They almost are a binding agent. Mm -hmm. And then a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And I don't measure pepper usually. I just kind of twirl in about a quarter of a teaspoon. And then you're gonna use just your potato masher. Do you wanna smash that for sure. me, Allison? And basically you're just gonna mix it together with a potato masher. Now while you mash that, should we talk about Shane's turkey and how it should not <laughs> sit out overnight? We have some oh, questions. Oh, come on. <laughs> when I was a kid, we used to put it in the, like, in the sink overnight and then it would go from frozen to ready. And then I tried to do that with my like after I was married and I lived with my wife. I'm like, hey, it's Thanksgiving tradition. Put it in the sink. She's like, that's not a tradition. <laughs> no, and you could put it in a sink full of water and change the water out frequently. If you've got a larger turkey, 10 to 12 pound turkeys can go into the refrigerator today as well as a turkey breast. If you have a larger turkey, you can put it in a sink full of water, but you want to change that cool water every 30 minutes to an hour because you want to keep it in a food safe temperature. If you don't have a turkey in the refrigerator by today, it's time to get a fresh turkey. But even those are super chilled and you want those in the refrigerator by Wednesday because they do take some time to come up from 31 degrees, you know, which is that super chilled. It's not quite frozen right. um, or 33 degrees, I guess, 30, just, just over frozen. So you want them in the refrigerator as well. Okay, Let's you've got that almost together. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you too here in a yeah. second about leftovers because we were talking food safety in the commercial break. Mm. That's something that always kind of makes me a little leery. Well, leftovers should be in the refrigerator within two hours of being cooked. You really don't want them sitting at room temperature any more than two hours. And you know my best trick for leftovers is if you're having people coming over, pull out all those old cottage cheese and sour cream and yogurt containers and send everybody home with their leftovers in those containers. I save those up all week or all year long and then just send everybody That's home perfect. with their containers and then they can just toss them. You don't have to use a bunch of baggies and it's kind of reusing. Yeah. Okay, so this casserole, you can see there's still kind of some chunks in here and that's how you want it. You just want to make sure that everything's all mixed through. I have an eight by eight dish here that has been buttered because you want it, you don't want it to stick. And this is going to go in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. Now I like to top mine with some toasted almonds. If you are not a fan of the almonds, then you can totally leave them off. Or if you've got somebody that's got nut allergies, you don't have to put the almonds, but I think it adds a little bit of crunch, a little bit of texture. And I have the directions to toast the almonds in the microwave up on the Feed Your Family Tonight website. And basically you're just gonna 
put this in the oven for 30 minutes and this sweet potato casserole, there's a little sweetness because they are sweet potatoes, but it's not like that achingly sweet marshmallows right. and cinnamon and sugar, which that has its place, but sometimes you want something a little bit different. That's Absolutely. fair, yeah. And I mean, judging by the way it's prepared, you could eat, do this with regular russet potatoes, I imagine? I suppose you could. You know, I haven't tested it with that. I think the russet potatoes, you probably want a little bit of butter in there too. You're going to need a little bit more liquid. Sure. The sweet potatoes are usually a little bit softer with the sour cream, but you could probably do this with regular right. potatoes. I think it'd be delicious. It's yeah. so easy. And like we said, uh, when we kind of teased the segment, you could do this way ahead of time. Absolutely. This can be made up just like this. Actually, put it in the refrigerator. It'll take last up to three days in the fridge and then bake it the day of. Or you can roast your potatoes ahead of time and assemble the casserole. So there's kind of several steps. And we talk about that at Feed Your Family tonight. You separate your prep time from your cook time. What step can you do now? Right. You know, you can do the sweet potatoes today. You can mix the casserole tomorrow. You can put it into the oven on Thursday. These are all little things that can help you be ready for yeah. Thanksgiving. That's Especially because so many of us eat early on Thanksgiving. You don't have as much prep time during the day. So yeah, yeah it's great to have it ready to go. Marie, thank you so much. We want to let you know more about uh, the Feed Your Family tonight. Planner, you got the meal planner here and uh, the cookbook, all sorts of stuff that can help us out on feedyourfamilytonight.com as well. Marie, have a very wonderful Thanksgiving. Oh, thank you. Same to you, too. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you next Monday right here on Good Morning Cakeland. We'll be right back.